All right. All right, guys. It's October 4th, and we're going to do another horror movie review for the 31 Days of Horror. And today, tonight, it's going to be The Mangler. Okay. Uh, I've been looking forward to watching this movie for a long time. It's an old classic horror movie. And, you know, I've probably been looking forward to watching it at least since maybe I was 18, since I really started getting into movies even more, you know, as an adult. And there was a website that I used to visit all the time called Upcoming Horror Movies, and it might have been upcominghorrormovies.com or .net. And it probably still exists today. I haven't looked at it for a long time. But um, it was a movie that blessed me with so many great horror movies that I love, like The Hitcher and Bad Taste. And, you know, it's just dedicated to horror movies that would talk about new ones coming out, but it also talked about classics, and they had their own rating system and everything. And there were comments and user reviews, and I loved reading those. And I remember The Mangler being on there. And I did watch The Mangler Reborn, which I think was the sequel, which doesn't really have a whole lot to do with this one. And it's not a very good movie at all. But me and a buddy rented that one time, I think, from Family Video. And there's a killer with a hammer and... The Mangler, the Mangler is basically about a machine that's like demon possessed that kills people. Okay. And the Mangler Reborn, it's like a completely different machine and it's like in a house and has like a lot of sharp blades and stuff. Well, this one in the original movie, it's like this huge like laundry press, basically. Um, and so it takes place in this huge factory where this machine is. And. Uh, I just want to say, you know, I just got done watching this movie not too long ago for the first time, and I did enjoy it. And it's kind of what I figured it would be. It's a good popcorn horror movie. There's nothing that's, like, really frightening about it, but the gore is a little bit unsettling. It is. There is some graphic gore in here because the machine eats up people. It folds them up, like folding laundry, and it, like, crushes them, and you see some gruesome stuff in there. And, you know, the gore might be more gruesome than... Uh, cold fish that I just talked about because in cold fish, you know, they kill the people and then they chop up their bodies afterwards. And what you see is like the body like chopped up after they were already dead. But in the mangler, like, you know, that the machine like wrecked their body. And so when you see their mangled corpse and stuff, it's like, oh, like you see their face is kind of like a flesh mask and there's like blood on it. It's like all like torn and there's like, like, um, like it's just like a mound of blood and flesh and clothing, like all mangled together. It's like, ah, oh, man, like they went through that and they felt that like all the way. Like it's, so it gives you a little bit of a different feeling. So that's pretty gruesome. Um, I'm going to try to go over the plot and just talk about some things. Basically, Robert England is in this movie. He's the guy who played the original Freddy Krueger. And so he's like a completely different character in this, but he is a villain and he is the guy who runs this laundry factory with this machine. This machine is huge. It's a huge, huge, huge machine. I don't know what to compare it to, like a semi or something like it's, it's pretty big. They got to walk, you know, all the way around it. It's like, it's like a house. I don't know. It's gigantic and it's horrifying in the scenes with the factory and stuff. There's a lot of, you know, industrial stuff there, a lot of pipes and metal and rust and, there's a lot of like steam and like fog coming out and so I was thinking like if they made like a horror house that you could walk through and you could like walk by the mangler and see it, it would be pretty horrifying in person. Anyway, um, we start out basically at the factory. There's girls that work there and uh, one of the girls accidentally like cuts her hand on part of the machine and, and she's bleeding and she like goes like that and like the blood goes into the machine and there are these guys behind her carrying like this ice box or whatever and they kind of bump her like they're going to bump her into the machine but there's like an electrical explosion between the machine and that ice box and it blows them all back and everybody in the factory stops after that like what in the hell's going on here and um I think that's when Robert England comes out. His character in this one, he's like an older guy with like gray hair. He's wearing glasses like that you see with, but like one eye is completely black on the glasses. Like he lost his eye. He also has like steel um, 
casts on both of his legs and he walks with two crutches so like he can't use you know his legs really very much and um he also has like a hole in his trachea like something with his throat there um so he's pretty messed up but uh you know there's the foreman that works there and there's this older lady that works there and there's the new girl um that they're kind of curious about and after that incident we're introduced to like the detective in the movie and he's like the main character basically and his voice is kind of weird to me but i mean he's a cool character one thing about this movie is there is a lot of quote-unquote curse words or whatever you know there's a lot of strong language in this movie but it's funny um he's trying to like back out of his house or something and those two guys with that ice box come in and they, they almost hit him or something and he gets out and he's like what the hell like what are you guys doing and they're he's like you idiots and they're like we're trying to move this ice box or whatever and he's like i don't care if you were trying to deliver a pizza to the effing pope like <laughs> you know he uh there's a lot of funny like one-liners and stuff in this movie um anyway there's the older lady like i said and throughout this movie the detective's like eating anti-acids or whatever and i guess this old lady's eating anti-acids too and um which is kind of cool because i have heartburn and i take stuff like that all the time so i can kind of relate to that but uh, what he needs to get is some Prilosec, because that would help a lot. But he's taking, like, Tums, basically, like, chewables. But anyway, she has her medicine, and um, she, like, knocks it close to the machine. There's kind of, like, a conveyor belt that draws the sheets into the machine. And then, like, at the end of the machine, they get folded up. So she drops, like, her medicine, like, on the kind of conveyor belt part to it. It's, like, really close. And uh, she ends up reaching in there anyways, long story short, like she gets pulled completely through the machine and it kills her. And there's like blood splat spraying everywhere. Like you watch her like going through the machine. And so, yeah, there's like blood splatter and, uh, you know, it's like, why doesn't anybody hit the kill switch or whatever? <laughs> I guess they're supposed to be like a uh, um, safety bar or something. They mentioned that later on, but. The thing to me that when I first saw this, like her hand going into the machine, it reminds me exactly of a lot of safety videos that I've watched throughout the years working for various factories and stuff. And some of those things, you can find them on YouTube. They are real horrifying. They're like horror movies themselves. I should review those. Um, you know, they're like, don't put your hands in the machines. And then they'll show like somebody putting their hand in the machine, like the mangler. And it gets like, they should just use the mangler for like a safety <laughs> instruction video. I mean, I've seen, you know, even where there's like spills on the floor and they're like, make sure if there's a spill that you mop it up or that you mark the spill because this could happen. And then they show someone walking by and whoops, he slips. And then like his bone like breaks through his leg or something and there's blood. And he's like, ah, like those, those safety videos will give you nightmares. I'm telling you. But anyways, it's pretty gruesome when she goes through the machine. Um, and I think that, uh, I don't know if her name was Adele and the Robert England character, uh, Mr. Garland is his name or whatever. He's like, hell's bells, Adele. <laughs> um, anyway, so after this happens, they, of course, the detective gets called on the case. And, um, you know, I'm going to mix things up, but I think the detective gets there. And somehow we find out that Mr. Garland is in good with like the judge and the sheriff or whatever so like they end up showing up and they're, they basically tell him to leave but before that happens um he gets to see the body he he talks to the foreman and he's like what the hell happened here and the foreman's like he's like do i have to tell you he's like yeah you gotta tell me he's like well he's like go look at it and uh he's like i can't bear to look at it again and so the detective goes around to the machine and that's the first time we see like that mangled old woman and then uh, he vomits after he sees it. But there's also this old guy there that takes photographs, like photographs of the crime scenes. And he's using like this old time camera and he throws something on the ground every time. I guess it's like the flash or whatever. I don't really know. Um, this guy was kind of creepy himself because he was old. And I don't know if it was like makeup or what, but they made him look like ghoulish. I kind of thought that he was going to be a villain or that maybe he was like a ghost or something. But he ends up being the guy's friend the detective's friend basically but he's kind of creepy because he's always there for like all these crime scenes and just the way that he acts it's kind of like what's up with this guy 
Anyways, we're also introduced to the detective's friend, and the detective's friend is a guy who's all into spiritual occult stuff. And, you know, he mentions, you know, that uh, there could be, like, demon possession. Maybe later on after something else happens, because later on there's an incident with the... Uh, like, they, they don't want the machine and stuff to continue, I guess, but, like, because Mr. Garland's in with the judge and everything, like, he can continue the, the business anyway. And I guess people still want to work there or whatever, but, uh, there's an incident where, like, a steam hose of the machine, like, comes loose and it's blowing, like, steam on the girls and they have to go to the hospital because it, like, burns their faces and stuff. So they're trying to find out, you know, what's all going on here and... Like I said, he, his friend is into demonology and all that stuff, and he, th he thinks, you know, maybe the machine's possessed, and uh, the detective really doesn't want to hear any of it. He's like, there's three things. There's, like, God, guns, and country, and, like, everything else is bullshit. He's like, this is reality. That's bullshit. And, uh, anyway... This Mr. Garland guy is an evil guy, and he has this other girl with him, and he's, like, keeping her, and she's the new girl, and at some point in the movie, well, there's something that happens with this icebox thing, okay? This icebox gets placed somewhere, and somebody ends up, like, strangling because of it, or around it, or something. I don't know. They go there to check out that crime scene and <clears throat> basically the guy who's into spiritualism and stuff he he says that there could be like a transference of evil because the ice box like touched the mangler machine and now the evil's transferred and they go there and basically like he opens the ice box and there's like dead birds in there but there's like a dove or something and the spiritual's friend guy's like you know here dove like you can come out of there and then the door like shuts on his arm he's like ah oh, you know it won't it's it's trying to break his arm or whatever and so the detective pulls him out and the detective gets pissed off and he goes and gets a sledgehammer and he's just like wailing on this ice box and like everybody's watching him he's like you evil son of a <laughs> just like hitting this ice box and there's something on top of the icebox, some kind of vent or something. He ends up knocking that off. And then there's like a whirlwind of, like a spiritual whirlwind, that vortex that comes out of it. And these are like bad, outdated graphics, <laughs> like visuals, uh, you know, um, whatever, special effects. Which doesn't really bother me, but some people are turned off by stuff. Right? Like, oh, that looks so fake. It's like, this is a movie about like a demon-possessed, uh, you know machine like it's all fake but i understand you know sometimes people don't like the outdated stuff but it didn't really bother me but i will say yeah it didn't really look great okay um because i'll acknowledge when the effects are like really good but that was not so great but the gore effects were so i mean there's some you gotta give and take in here but so anyways like now he's pretty much a believer in this because he saw that and the picture guy was there taking a picture and he saw he got pictures of it basically but this Robert England character has this girl. He ends up sh showing her some contracts that he made. And he's basically saying that... Uh, basically saying that he made a contract and gave like his 16-year-old daughter to um, the machine or something. And, and uh, the machine is what took his legs or whatever, I think, too, and he made a contract, and he said basically, like, part of me is in the machine, and part of the machine is in me, and uh, he showed her a contract with his hand, like, a bloody handprint of his, and he's like, here's where I sign, and he's like, you're going to become part of this contract, and he put her hand on it, and, like, so now, like, a part of it's in her, so now, like, she's evil. Well, um, I think before that, the detective confronts him he comes to the factory and when he comes there the machine he gets close to the machine he's smoking a cigarette and the machine grabs like his cloak or he's got like a long jacket on and grabs it and starts eating it like it's pulling him in but he gets out of it 
and the foreman's there and he's asking you know where's mr garland and the foreman tries to stop him he's like he's not here whatever and he's like whatever he punches the foreman he bolts into the office that's when mr garland tells him basically you know that he has power and you know with all the the higher ups there and you know it's not about money power is not all about money it's about you know things that the detective can't understand and stuff like that then later on i think we see that contract signing thing um the foreman talks to mr garland and when mr garland's like well the detective wants us to shut down the mangler and uh, the foreman's like well i've been thinking actually that maybe that's a good idea maybe we should shut it down and well you know what do you know later on uh he dies <laughs> he uh, gets his arm gets eaten by the machine and then a guy comes with an axe and he's like you know do it like cut it off cut it off and he cuts it off but then he just dies anyway it's like bleeds out um so one of the girls that works there is 16 like the daughter that died of mr garland and she is the niece of mr garland and her husband's her her kids like died in an accident whatever um basically the guy that takes the photographs ends up dying but before he dies he tells the detective that he has like a gift for him because they're like friends and stuff so he has a gift for him like in his photography place so the detective and a spiritualist friend go to the photography place they find the gift and it's like a collection of things that this camera guy's been saving throughout the years of all these 16 year old girls like missing they're all girls of like um people who have high authority or a lot of money or whatever and they've all been missing like throughout the years like on their birthdays and uh so they put it together that uh he remembers that mr garland told him that sacrifices have to be made so they've basically been sacrificing virgin 16 year old girls to this mangler machine so it's kind of like molech or whatever you know they're sacrificing it to this machine and they realize that this girl's that this girl that they talked to um that initially i think she was the one that initially cut her hand on the machine and the machine got a taste of her blood and they um <clears throat> they realize that she's 16 and it's her birthday and they need to do something fast because it's going to happen that night which reminds me of something funny earlier on because the spiritualist guys like you know we need to know if the blood that went into this machine was the blood of a virgin so they go question the girl and the police he's like i need you he's he asked the detective like i need you to find out if she's a virgin he's like yeah that's a great idea i'm gonna ask her if she's a virgin he's like i'll lose my job and everything like they'll kick me out of the town like that's a great idea well they go there and they question her, and the spiritualist guy's like you know before they leave he's like i need to know are you a virgin and she's like what are you creep get out of here basically it's funny but anyway they end up the robert england guy mr garland and now his evil woman that's with him they both go and they capture the girl and um they put like chloroform on her face like knock her out so they bring her to the mangler and they're going to sacrifice her but the the police guy and his spiritualist buddy show up there and there's a little a little bit of a struggle and fight there and the um, spiritualist woman ends up getting thrown into the mangler i mean the, i mean the bad woman gets thrown into the mangler so she dies um <laughs> and <laughs> anyways mr garland walks around to the end of the machine to see what happened to her and like the, the machine he gets pushed into the machine and the machine kind of grabs him and folds him up and the spiritualist guy had this plan all along that they were going to put holy water on the machine and they were going to do you know uh do prayers or cantations or whatever to to exercise this machine and you know all these plans that he had and so they're like throwing everything at it they're like in the name of the father the son and the spirit and they're like throwing basically bibles at it and crosses and holy water it's like eating everything up and it's like glowing red and smoking and eventually 
the detective throws like this anti-acid in there that I guess was from the original old woman that killed it. And I don't real I don't realize what the significance was, but they said that somehow it had some kind of significance and they're like, oh crap, like we messed it up now. And um it blows off like parts of it and it like transforms, and this is kind of like another bad special effects part. But it transforms and basically, you know, it has like legs and stuff and it's like following him now. <laughs> so it's chasing him and it's chasing him down these corridors and everything. It's all metal, industrial pipes and stuff. Kind of creepy, creepy atmosphere. But and it has like robotic hands with like fingers and stuff now. And something that took me by surprise is that the spiritualist friend guy dies. Um, he falls down or something and the... Mangler just like claws his body like in half and he's like the only you only see like the top part of his torso with like his guts hanging out and He's like, uh It's like quick from like out of nowhere. It's like I did not expect that guy to die But he just gets ripped in half. It's kind of like the alien scene like when the Android gets ripped by the queen alien at the end I wonder which came first from those but uh, You know, this is also based on a Stephen King short story. It's kind of where it rare Weird for me to put that in here. It's also directed by Todd, Todd Hopper, Hopper, or whatever. I'm totally butchering everything, but it's the guy that did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, which is a great disturbing movie. And and I was thinking, you know, I should have said that the other night when I was talking about Cold Fish, that, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is pretty disturbing, and they're kind of a little bit similar, too. Anyways, great director. is based on a short story. It has a great actor, a couple actors. And I didn't know that the main Todd... Levine guy, or whatever his name is. What is his name? I can't read from me. Ted Levine. I didn't know that he was in The Silence of the Lambs. He's the detective, so... Anyway. So this thing's chasing him, kills his buddy, so now it's only the girl and the detective. And they're running down this winding stairway down that looks like gothic. And it's, like, completely random. Like, how is this part of the factory? Like, uh, it's weird, but... Is chasing him and the girl's like, no, like it wants me, it wants me, I'm gonna go to it. It's like, what? Like, you're gonna sacrifice yourself now? So she starts running towards it and he's like, no, like you're not gonna do it. She's like, why? It's like, because I'm a policeman. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, but she does end up getting like her hand into the machine, but he pulls her out. They end up jumping like down through the middle of the staircase and it's like a sewer down there and they land in water. And they get into a tunnel, and then I don't really know what happens. It's like the mangler jumps down and lands in the water and dies or something. I don't really know what happens there. But they, they get out of the sewers, and it's kind of like everything's like fine now, okay? Well, it shows later on uh, the detective going to the hospital to check on the girl. And uh, they're like, the doctor's like, she lost a lot of blood, but you can't see her. But she's doing better. And then, like, when he leaves, like, he raises his hand like he's missing a finger like that. And he notices it. It's like, okay. Well, then later on, he goes to this place. I think it's called the Blue Ribbon Laundry Matters, Laundry Place or something. I don't know. Laundry Press. Anyway, he goes there with, like, blue flowers. And it shows her being the boss now. She's now leading this place. The mangler machine is back, like normal, it's just there again, and she is very mean, kind of like the Mr. Garland places. She's, you know, get your asses to work and everything, and charging everybody around. And he looks up at her, and, like, she puts her hand up, like, she's got a finger missing, and then he just, like, puts the flowers, like, to the side, and then he just gets in his car and leaves, and that's the end of it. And so it's the whole thing of, like, the machine has a part of them, and they have a part of the machine. So it's like, she's evil now, and, like, more people around the town are evil. And this thing apparently has been around, like, forever, and apparently it's going to stay around forever. And so the ending's kind of like, well, what was solved here? Like, probably nothing. <laughs> so, but, you know what? It was a good movie. Like I guess so the gore was pretty nasty. It's just a good popcorn flick. You get to see some bad effects. Uh, a lot of, you know, funny one-liners, and just, it's just one of those corny, cheesy kind of horror movies. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a classic. <sighs> Let's look. There's the detective with the girl, and there's the bad ones over there, Robert England. Um... I don't know how well the lighting would be, but there's some stuff on the inside of this. 
made by the Shout Factory. And the machine, I mean, the machine itself is kind of horrifying. And I love that how it's a movie based on basically like a killer machine. You know, I love um, <clears throat> Maximum Overdrive, you know, and that creeped me out as a kid with the vehicles and stuff that are alive killing people. And, you know, it's somewhat similar uh, of an idea. But, yeah, nothing really too creepy. No, no real huge pop-out scares or anything like that. It doesn't make me contemplate my life a lot and stuff, kind of like cold fish would. Um, you know, it's kind of one you can just turn off your brain and stuff, but I'm sure there are a lot of things that could be drawn out of this about factory work and different things. I don't know. But The Mangler, October 4. This is my fourth horror movie review, so I'm very glad to own this Blu-ray. And I probably had this for like a year. But I finally watched it, so the timing is now, so. Alright, guys. The Mangler. When was this movie made? Tobe. It was Tobe Hooper was the director. So I was trying to think, did he do the Poltergeist, too? I don't remember. But they mentioned the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on here. Ted Levine was also in the original Hills Have Eyes. It's like the movie was made in 1995. Hmm. But when, um, basically when the foreman's arm, as when I said the foreman got his arm into the machine and they had to like cut out with an axe, like, Mr. Garland comes out and they're like, why don't you do something? He's like, do something. Like, here, I'll do a dance for you. Like, how's <laughs> he's like dancing while the guy's dying. <laughs> Basically, he's, like, up on an upper balcony because I think he basically lives there in the factory. And, like, in this upper, like, room, basically, is where he stays. He has, like, a nice room up in there. Anyway, yeah, if you like some corny, cheesy, bloody, fun, classic horror movie, check it out. Um, something different, you know, that's not zombies, not vampires. It's a laundry press. <laughs> so... All right, guys, that is going to be it, and see you later.